Hi, my name is Lily. Today I would like to show you some behind the scenes of my last stop motion animation called Love as Many Colors. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to put a link above and in the description below. In my last three videos, I've shown in detail how I made my three sets, the pub, the office and the kitchen. I always try to design them in a way that they are very flexible, so you can remove the ceiling, you can remove the wall if needed. Today I'm going to show you how that worked out in practice. That might come handy if you're in the process of designing your own set to be aware of what's going to make your life easier during animation or what is going to restrict you. This animation was more complicated to animate than what I've done before because of the amount of puppet that needs to be moved simultaneously and also the dialogue. So I'm going to show you what I've done with the Dragon Frame software and how I've used it in a way that is helpful for the dialogue scenes. I'm also going to talk about the amount of hours that I spent on each stage of the project. And yes, there were a lot, a lot of hours. <laughs> when I shoot my animation, I always make sure all the windows are completely blacked out. In terms of equipment, my main camera is a Canon EOS RP. I've got a laptop with Dragon Frame installed on it, a set of three LED panel lights, GVM 800D, an LED ring light, and a clip-on LED lamp above the set. This time I decided to create a little platform to raise the set slightly. So I made sure my set was taped to that platform. The platform was taped to the table to make sure everything is absolutely stable and nothing is moving. I always make sure I keep all my tools nearby so I can get them very quickly when I need them. The table itself was taped to the floor and every single tripod and the camera was firmly taped to the floor as well. So no movement whatsoever. Now, when it comes to this platform, I'm aware that some of you watching this video are too young to care about silly things such as your back. But personally, I'm 40 years old. And when I spend so many hours bend over going back and forth between the set and the laptop, it breaks my back. By the end of the day, I can feel it and the next day is worse. So I decided I'm going to try to create a little platform to raise slightly the set. It's nothing fancy. I'm talking about studs and plywood. It raises the set from 12 cm, but honestly, it makes a huge difference. Overall, I, I really felt it. And moving forward, I'm always going to use that for my animations. There's another thing I've decided to improve in that animation. So far, I've always used my laptop with Dragon Frame on it. And when I've done a scene that contained a blink, for example, and it's so detailed and so small, sometimes it's frustrating to work on a laptop because the screen is not big enough. And I want to make sure my image is sharp, that I'm in control of how much movement there is in between each picture. And sometimes I've really seen limitation with the laptop. So I've decided instead of using the laptop to use my desktop. And boy, that makes a difference. I can actually see what I'm doing. That was amazing. I mean, some people say size don't matter. I strongly disagree with that. Not only I had a bigger screen and I had more control on the image, but I had all my software installed on this one. So I can easily go from the Dragon Frame software where I shoot my sequence to opening Lightworks, which is the software I'm using to edit all my video. And I can directly import the sequence I've just shot to see if it makes sense visually with the rest. Honestly, I'm not going back from now on. I'm just going to use my desktop directly. I need all my sets to be completely flexible because sometimes you're in the middle of a scene thinking, oh, I wish I can shoot it from that angle. So for me, all it takes is just taking the drill, removing a few screws, and even for the partition wall, I had just a bit of white tack to hold it in place. And that's it. I can clear a whole wall in seconds, move the sets around and have the exact angle I want for that scene. Same when I wanted to suddenly have the ceiling in the shot, so I can simply put it in place, play around with the lighting above it, and yeah, I have the image I want. So now near my set, I always keep a lot of different tools available. I have a little box with the eyelids in different skin tone, some white tack, my favorite sculpting tools. Then I have a few more sculpting tools, tapes, screwdrivers, and other bits. I also always make sure I have the exact color of clay. So for each character, as you can see them in the little yogurt pots, if I want to have the exact color for the skin tone of the character Gabrielle, for example, or the lips for touching up when I want to do a dialogue scene, I can have it straight away. I always wrap it up in clean fill to avoid it drying. 
I even put some clay aside on the color of each set on the floor to help just fill some gap a little bit. Now I'm going to talk about the elevator scenes. There was quite a few challenges in that one. I wanted to make sure I design an elevator that I can completely remove from the main set so I can have complete access very easily to my puppets. So first I remove the ceiling, then I move my set forward and I was able to place my elevators on the platform. I've also removed the walls of the elevator because there wasn't enough space above the elevator to make sure I have a complete control on the face of my character. It was much easier to be able to go from above and the side as well. I also had to move the doors and open them very gradually, so that was really helpful to have more access to them. On Dragon Frame, you can also install the grids, which are brilliant as a reference point to know exactly how much you open every single time and to make sure the doors line up correctly. When both my characters were inside the elevator, then I've decided to completely remove the set, move my elevator part in front of the camera, and then I have a much better access to be able to move them and animate them. Now I'm going to talk about the printer scene. First I install my tripod above the set to make sure I have a nice shot of the printer from above. And then I start to play with a small little piece of paper and a tweezer. I've cut the paper in different sizes Then I've used my tweezer to place very carefully and slowly my page so they can line up. So the first was very small, then I start to moving with the uh, bigger size and uh, I was actually happy to have those lines of text because they were helpful for me as a reference visually to know how much I need to move the next page further. If I show you the exact same scene, just slower, you can see the amount of movement for each image. Now, some of the shots were much more challenging than others. I mean, the pub itself was quite hard because there were dialogues. There were also the fireplace in the backgrounds. For the fireplace, I had to install a different flame for every shot. And I used a tweezer and some flame made out of warbler and a little bit of paint. So I had to move the flame every time. I also have to move the face. But then there is a dialogue that I need to make sure that the face and the mouth in particular will follow each letters and each words that the character was saying. So when it comes to the dialogue scene, I use my Dragon Frame software, open up the audio section, and then I click to add audio track. Once that was open, I took my files where I have pre-recorded each sentence separately. So I can easily take one sentence at a time and place it on my timeline exactly where I want. Now you can see the audio track is in. If I go back to the main screen, you can see the audio track appears on the side. Then I've marked up every words as a reference so I know exactly what's coming next and also I can mimic the word with my own mouth so I know exactly which shape I need to create. It helped give a rhythm and reference. So that was very, very precious to be able to manage the dialogue scene, which were hard. I always made sure I had some extra clay for the color of the skin, the mouth and the teeth as well. And it took quite some time to really slowly carve and shape and sculpt the mouth to make sure it was following each word. There was another scene in the pub where you can see there's dialogue first, which was already quite hard. But on top of that, there was two more puppets. So overall, I had four puppets to animate and you cannot just animate them in the same way. They cannot just move all the head to the right at the same time or to the left. So you need to keep track in some way of each movement of each puppet. What is she doing? Who is she looking at at that moment? And that could be quite, um, quite challenging. There was one scene where I wanted to have the front of the pub showing and also the top because I wanted the beam and the light to appear. That means I have to remove the walls to be able to just access the puppets. Now, if you can see in this setup, I should have moved the computer around because I kept going back and forth in between the computer and every single time, not only it's a waste of time and energy, but it's actually a risk of knocking the camera, knocking the light. And I mean, if you've done animation before, you know that once you, you move your camera, it's just, yeah, it's a moment of despair, basically. This is usually where the swearing begins. <laughs> 
Here is another example, much more efficient, where I set up my laptop next to the set. And as you can see, I can go back and forth in between three puppets much more easily, access it from above. I don't have to move much. So I'm saving time, I'm saving energy, and I'm not taking any risk to knock the camera on the way. I spent 100 hours in my workshop shooting this animation, but I was lucky to have a fantastic assistant to make sure that I was staying on track. And as you can see, she's literally sitting on my shots list. <laughs> Now, I'm not a professional in stop motion animation and I don't even have a proper training in that field. Actually, eight months ago, I didn't know much about it. But since then, I've been experimenting all the time in my workshop. And since I've been building stuff with my hands for all my life, I guess it's speed up the process a bit. I just wanted to make some videos that can help other people in their own creative journey. Because even if you haven't done any stop motion animation before, that's absolutely fine. Just to give you an idea, this was the stop motion animation I've done as my first one eight months ago. I know, very impressive. So if you start from scratch, that's absolutely fine. It's like everything. It gets better with practice, so just give it a shot. When it comes to the number of hours I spend on the project, it added up to roughly 500 hours. Yeah, I know. So first I spend a good week developing the idea. Try to see how I'm gonna tell that story, how I'm gonna design my sets, build every little thing from scratch. In this early stage, I was lucky to have some fantastic feedback from a very talented storyteller, Adrian Hay, and his feedback was very precious to help improve my story. I also needed to find some voice actors and I've never done that before because I've always used my voice so far, so I didn't know where to begin. I end up using the website Fiverr, and I was surprised by the quality of recording, how quickly I received them, and overall for a really good price, so I recommend it. When it comes to the time that I spend building my three sets and all the little props in it, there's probably 200 hours of work. Then the puppets, all the heads, all the costume, another 50, 60 hours at least. Then for the animation, I spend roughly 100 hours in my workshop, in the dark, moving tiny little puppets, one millimeter at a time, seriously questioning my sanity along the way. Honestly, I was just going crazy in that dark room. But then I was able to see the daylight again. Then the editing process began. So I spent a good week in my office, sorted out and clean up the footage, mainly with Photoshop and After Effects from removing the holes in the base that I used for the walking scene to erasing the moving furniture or props that was distracting, mainly with a mask in After Effects, or fixing footage that was just all over the place. Then it spent another good week to actually correcting the colors, cutting the footage to what was absolutely necessary, going over it again and again and again. I was lucky to have two incredibly talented ladies, Holly and Misha, who help out and design a fantastic music and sounds for that piece. And it makes it just so much better. So thank you ladies for that. So for me, that work added up to roughly 500 hours. And I don't even count the eight to 10 days that I spend editing all the tutorials that come after the animation, such as the tutorials you're watching right now. So yeah, overall it's a long and it's a long process and a huge amount of time. Will I do it again? <laughs> Probably, because <laughs> I'm already working on the next one. <laughs> For me, those little animations are an opportunity to tell stories that I think are missing about subjects that matter. There is a clear lack of diversity and I wanted to make sure I create stories that are relatable and inclusive. Things are improving over the years, but we're not where we should be, my point of view. I mean, everyone deserves a seat at the table, and to do that, we need to start by more representation. Personally, I've never seen an animation where the central character was black and gay or bisexual, and it's a shame that it doesn't exist, so I just decided to make it happen. Same with my last animation about being child-free. I think too often people who choose a child-free lifestyle are harshly judged and criticized, especially women, for basically doing whatever they want with their life. And I just thought, we need to change that narrative. And I took the opportunities to create this animation to change the narrative in a more positive one. The next stop-motion animation, which I've already started working on, it's about fitting in. 
and how much we affect our own mental health, try to fit in other people's box or change who we are to fit other people's expectation of who we should be. So I hope it raised awareness and encourage people to just be themselves and embrace truly who they are. So keep an eye on my channel in a few months time if I haven't lost my sanity wondering why on earth did I put myself through another one of those crazy projects. Hopefully you will see this animation. Until then, take good care of yourself.